Hello and welcome to Ecoholics. In this video, we will discuss very important strategy if you are a first timer in UGC Net Economics examination. Now, this examination is conducted by National Testing Agency. So that's why it is also called NTA Net Examination. It requires a post-graduation degree in economics. Okay. So this examination has been conducting in somewhat around 90 odd subjects. So if you're a postgraduate in economics, you can give this examination in economics. Okay. In this video, we'll not discuss about the paper pattern and all because we that we have already discussed in other videos. But here, if you are from any other subject, you can give in the subjects of your master degree. So there are paper one, paper two, two papers. One paper one is common for all the subjects and paper two is your subject related. So here, economics related. So these are the certain basic details of this examination. Now while studying economics for this examination, it's MCQ based paper. So sometimes it looks very easy, but it's on the same lines, it is challenging as well because of the vastness of the syllabus that UGC provides. In the syllabus of UGC net economics, we have 10 units starting from microeconomics to Indian economy. You can download the syllabus from the link given in the description. The most important thing to understand before attempting this examination is that you have to well versed with economics as a subject in your post graduation degree. Even if you are in the final year of your post graduation, still you can attempt this examination. This examination requires thorough understanding of the syllabus, previous year question papers, how to make notes, how to st study the study material resources and how to revise and how to take the mock test. These are the things which are very, very important and we discuss in our three hours master class for UGC Net Economics. The registration is absolutely free. The link is given in the description. So you can register for the workshop on UGC Net Economics three hours workshop. Now in this video, we will discuss five important strategies. Let's come to the core area. Number one is syllabus. So in the syllabus, UGC has given 10 units. Although if you read the notification, they have said that all the units will be given equal amount of weightage. It means 10 units getting 100 question is like 10 question each. But this pattern has never been followed. It means you will find questions from one unit, you'll find more question from another less question. That is why the syllabus is very vital. Second is the exam pattern. So under the exam pattern, it is MCQ based. It is computer based test. So CBT computer based test. So these are the two major thing that you need to keep in mind. Plus there is no negative marking as well. So in those 10 units, it has been divided into almost all the subjects of your post graduation like macro, micro, then we have stats, econometrics, mathematical economics, money banking, finance, public finance, international economics, environment, and Indian economy. So here you need to understand that exam pattern and the syllabus, both are important for you to understand. Now, when you see the syllabus, it's very important to make notes while studying. If you make notes, it is very, very helpful for you. So I would recommend to have 10 folders. You must have seen that leave let folders, harmonium like folders. So in those 10 folders, you can divide into certain subjects and whatever notes you will make, you will divide into micro, macro and so on. And on top, if you have one topic known as consumer demand, Okay, microeconomics topic. Write all those things in this page, which can become a MCQ question in the examination. So this is how you are making revision handy notes. And how will you make this? From the syllabus. And from the syllabus, then you will see PYQs or from those PYQs, because in previous year question papers, if you see, there are so many things that they are asking, which is not the part of the direct written syllabus. 
in the syllabus they have written certain kind of units and themes but under it they have not defined the syllabus previously they have defined but when the pattern changed like almost eight years back seven years back they have not defined those so pyqs here comes very handy where you get those subtopics so on the basis of those subtopics you make notes this is how you approach the number one thing second is you understand the weightage game like i said that from the unit one to ten units that they have given in those from first to ten units you must have realized that topic or the syllabus has been like fairly spread out evenly but when you see the questions in past papers you will find the questions from microeconomics like 15 but from questions like stats you may find five or from ecotrix that is econometrics you may find two questions although they have given that they will ask equal amount of weightage in all these questions but still the weightage is like that so here what i'm saying that you have to understand the weightage game and you have to see the cost benefit analysis now what is cost benefit analysis it means the amount of input you will put in reading and the amount of output you will get in terms of question and the marks it means it's like time you will put in reading a subject known as microeconomics the output is output is huge but here if the same thing i will do for other subjects like for example time spent in indian economy now in indian economy you may get or you may not get the question that you are reading so output will be less because the vastness of the syllabus is huge so here you can say focus more on micro focus more on macro and focus more on those areas where you will see lot of questions in the past and you expect these questions in the future so remember that input output and cost benefit strategy next is schedule and the plan what i feel that this examination can be covered in around four to five months to give the first attempt since you are a postgraduate economics student now here what you need to understand is this whole four weeks or four uh, months and five months period if you divide into weeks it will come around 20 weeks and in 20 weeks you have 10 units to cover now in these 10 units one unit should be given 14 days it means whole microeconomics in 14 days is it possible if you just backtrack things it's not possible to revise the whole micro in 14 days if you are well versed in postgraduate still it's a challenging task so what i say when you make a schedule or a plan to study you have to divide these weeks into certain units and these units must be divided according to the weightage like for example if you read environmental economics if you read money banking they that will require less number of weeks but in comparison to micro macro growth and development they are having a vast syllabus like international economics they require more time so when you are making a schedule like we make schedule personalized timetable for each and every student who enrolled in our ug senate economics live batch what we do for them is we allocate those hours and we make three kinds of timetable for them like those who are full-time aspirant if you are a college going student okay college student or you are a working professional these three people require different kind of strategy like for you are a working professional you need to devote morning hours to have more energy and study and evening hours for classes but if you are a college going student you can do these things in the afternoon as well and if you are a full-time aspirant you can do a lot of things so you have to be scheduled the plan and the timetable accordingly now very important thing is revision and pyq like i told you if you make notes like that it this examination is fairly very easy but the challenge is in execution so whatever i told till the point number three it's very easy on eyes but when you try to execute it will take time and effort and you need guidance as well since what i'm saying that 
people say, sir, we don't require coaching and guidance. I would say, yes, if you have a plan for a year or maybe more than a year, two years, three years, you can easily crack this examination. If you are playing at a level which is competing with all India, you require guidance. So don't say no to guidance and mentoring. Even if you don't like someone, don't go for it. But have certain experienced person on your side to guide you because here the task is not to clear the exam, but clearing the exam within a time frame, within a limited period of time so that you can focus on rest of your career post UGC net clearance. So revision, first of all, your revision should be random. Why random? When I teach in uh, UGC net classes, people say, sir, uh, this week microeconomics, next week Indian economy, the next week environmental economics. Uh, why don't you like finish the micro first, then we go to macro, then we finish macro, then we'll go. I say that you have to understand, you have to have the habit of this randomness. Because in the question paper, you will not be getting micro question like at one, like next 10 question will be of microeconomics. No, they will be asking questions randomly. So when the questions are, they are asking randomly, you should also revise randomly. Second thing, your note should be revision friendly. It means that you can revise the whole thing in one week, in one day and in one hour. These should be the specific things in your notes. For example, I have a page known as inflation. Now, if I revise this, it will take me to read certain lines. For example, it will take three minutes to read. But if you use the highlighter or you can encircle few things, you can revise this in 30 seconds as well. So your notes should be like that, where revision is easy. Why we are making notes? Because we don't want to refer books and waste our time. Books also works as a distraction sometimes. We don't want to distract ourselves. So here, this is very, very important. PYQs, let's come to PYQs. In PYQs, it is very vital to see the pattern and the trend. If the question they're asking is related to facts, you should be seeing facts in there as well. So PYQs will give you a roadmap. Okay. When you see the syllabus, syllabus is like this is microeconomics and one, two, three, four, five. These are the five points. So production, market, consumer, it's like nothing defined. But when you see PYQs, in PYQs you got the question from perfect competition. You got the question from monopoly. Then you will realize, okay, for market structure, I need to read this. I need to read oligopoly. I need to read duopoly. I need to read monopolistic competition. So you will understand that a one single point written as market structure converted into three points. So these PYQs will give you the roadmap. And this roadmap will help you to cover the syllabus on time. That's why previous year question papers are important. It's like putting a navigation. Okay, so suppose from point number A, you need to travel to point number B. What you'll do? You'll open the Google map and then you will put the navigation destination. So your destination is what syllabus is telling you. But this is the way where PYQs are helping where to move on. Fifth one is three important thing, mock test, accuracy, and time management. If I give you six hours to solve UGC and economics paper, you will be able to do it easily. In these six hours, it's easy, but the problem is that the time given in the examination is not six hours. So you have to do this in a in a particular stipulated time period with a clock on. So whenever you give any test, always remember to put stopwatch. Always remember. Even if it is taking too much time, still you put a stopwatch. 
because if you don't put a stopwatch, you will not understand how much extra you are taking right now and you have to reduce it. So tests are there. Then analysis. Generally, people give test and they do not analyze. That is what we call feedback. Okay. Feedback is important. For example, one question is there and four options. So suppose, for example, you have done a mistake here. The answer was this, but you have selected option B and the answer went wrong. Now here you need to understand that point number A and point number B. You marked point A and the correct answer was uh, not B that you have marked. Now option number C and option number D can become an idea for next question. And that is why I call analysis is very vital. So if you're spending suppose two hours in giving the mock test, spend eight hours, eight hours to analyze that mock test. Okay, this is very vital. And the last one is accuracy. This is again vital thing, although there's no negative marking, but so this is what we call efficiency. Whenever you are talking about any examination, it's always relativity. You have to do better than others. It's not you have to top the examination. You have to do, do better than others. So the exam is all about relativity. There's a cutoff to do better than others. If you are efficient, if your questions are accurate, you're thinking before reading the question, you're reading the question carefully then answering. Without looking at the option, you are trying to answer the question. That is where you improve the accuracy. In my other video of UG Senate, I have given the technique on how to solve the MCQs. So you can watch more on accuracy there. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our free workshop, which is for three hours, where we have explained each and everything about UGC net examination in detail. If you like this video, subscribe to Ecolix channel to get more videos on UGC net economics. Thank you and all the best.